Continuing our coverage of SEC Media Days, here's a look at how Ole Miss did in the 2022 season. The Rebs finished 8-5. and five. They started the season hot, going 7-0, and but lost five of their last six games. They were led by the freshman phenom Quinshawn Judkins, who led the SEC in rushing, almost beating records set by Herschel Walker. Low note to end the season, losing to Texas Tech in the Texas Bowl. But if you look at how Ole Miss has done under Lane Kiffin, 23 and 13, that's actually the fourth best in the SEC in that span. So he's keeping them close to the top of that conference. Now for more on the Rebs, let's welcome in David Johnson, our team site expert for Inside the Rebels. David, thanks for joining us today. Thanks. And we'll start with the defense. That losing streak to end the season was kind of because the defense stuttered out there, giving up 35 points a game. Now Lane Kiffin brings in Pete Golding as defensive coordinator. He spent the last five years at BAM in the same position. What kind of impact do you expect him to have year one? Yeah, there's a new sheriff in town on the <laughs> defensive side of the ball. Um, you know, Pete won a national championship at Alabama coaching with Nick Saban. Um, and to say that Rebel fans' expectations are any lower would just be untrue. But the problem Pete is going to have, I think, particularly in the first year, is he doesn't have the same kind of bullets in his guns that he had with the Crimson Tide. Um, at Alabama, if you rotated a five-star out, a lot of times you could put a five-star back in there, or if not, a highly rated four-star. Ole Miss doesn't have that depth on the defensive side of the football right now, and that could be an issue, obviously, in year one for Pete Golding. Uh, will they be better? Yeah, they're going to be better. I've known Pete Golding for a long time, covered his college playing career, uh, and uh, have followed him up through the ranks. And Pete Golding is a fighter. He's, he, he's a low-down, dirty go-getter. And he's going to do that with the Ole Miss defense. We're already seeing results on the recruiting trail. Pete's going out there and getting the Rebels in the game for some big-time talent uh, that I don't think they would be in it otherwise if not for Pete Golding being in Oxford. So Pete Golding at Ole Miss as the defensive coordinator, that's a very good thing. All right, Lane Kiffin, the self-proclaimed portal king, he brings in the sixth best class of 2023 transfer portal cycle with 25 commits and two pieces he's really excited about are the four-star wide receivers, Zakari Franklin, who at the time of his signing was the top player available, and then Trey Harris. What do you think they bring to the Rebs passing attack? Well, yeah, Grace, it, it, it's kind of simple. They've got to bring those stats that Franklin put up at UTSA and that Harris put up at Louisiana Tech. Um, they need to be thousand yard caliber receivers. And you know, that, that's gonna open up the entire Ole Miss offense if they prove to be reliable targets for Jackson Dart. Um, you know, you have Quinshawn Judkins in the backfield, which you've already mentioned, and he's a Heisman Trophy contender going into the season. Uh, but it's gonna take a balanced attack from Ole Miss for Judkins to reach his full potential. And that's up to Zachary Franklin and Trey Harris. Uh, it's kind of simple. And you're at a school now that has become accustomed to producing those big time NFL type wide receivers. You can go back to Dante Moncrief, Laquan Treadwell, uh, AJ Brown, DK Metcalf, Elijah Moore, uh, who are gonna be the next guys to step up and into that role. Both of these guys put up those kind of numbers at their previous schools. They're gonna have to prove that they're the talent that can do it in the SEC. Yeah, great history of wide receivers there in Oxford. Now, I caught something you said there that Zakari Franklin needs to be a reliable target for mm -hmm. Jackson Dart. Technically, I don't know if they know who the starting quarterback is. Maybe they do, and we're the ones who don't officially know, but Ole Miss has one of the best quarterback rooms in the SEC. They're mm -hmm. calling it a three-way quarterback battle between returning starter Jackson Dart, the OK State transfer Spencer Sanders, and LSU transfer Walker Howard. So how do you think this thing shakes out? Yeah, I'll go back to spring practice and I never saw Jackson Dart take a rep with anything other than the first team offense. And what I saw out of Dart was a maturation process that he's more comfortable in, in his skin, if you will, in terms of running the Rebel offense. Uh, Spencer Sanders showed up to Oxford with a, with a lingering shoulder injury. And you could tell during spring practice as a matter of fact, he was limited some weeks as to how many times he could even throw the football. 
Walker Howard is pretty much deemed the quarterback of the future. Um, when that future arrives, uh, some people might think it might be this fall. I'm not one of them. I think that Jackson Dart is going to be the Ole Miss starting quarterback, uh, hands down. And, uh, you know, you're right when you say it's one of the most talented quarterback rooms in the SEC. But um, Jackson Dart threw for almost 3,000 yards last year, 20 yeah. touchdown passes. Um, was he missing something? Yeah, probably so from an experience factor. But it looks like he gained that, and I expect Jackson Dart to be the guy throwing the football to Zachary Franklin and Trey Harris. All right, you mentioned uh, Walker Howard, the quarterback of the future. So let's look ahead uh, to the 2024 recruiting class. As it stands right now, it ranks 26 with 17 commits, but there's a couple recruits on the rival side of the state who are on flip watch. Who should we be looking out for? Yeah, yeah, there's no doubt about it. And, and you know, I'll say this again. Congrats to Mississippi State for <laughs> getting J.J. Harrell and Jimothy Lewis. Harrell being the outstanding wide receiver out of North Panola, Mississippi High School. Jimothy Lewis out of IMG Academy, but a Mississippi kid who transferred there. So both of those kids commit kind of surprisingly to Mississippi State last month. Will they stay committed? I don't know, but... I do know Ole Miss is full speed ahead on the recruitment of both of those guys. And, you know, it's a long way until December. And mm -hmm. personally, I, I, I'm going to be very tuned in to what happens with these two kids in particular. We'll see if Lane Kiffin ends up calling himself the Flip King as yeah. well. All right. Thanks, David, so much for your expertise. And for more from David and the entire staff, be sure to check out InsideTheRebels.com for the best Ole Miss coverage throughout SEC Media Days and Fall Camp as we get closer to 2023 kickoff. <laughs>